welcome to Thinking Out Loud. I'm Gloria Politis, your host. And today in the studio, I have Dr. Gail Barnes, who is uh, someone who is an expert in food and sustainability. And welcome. Thank you for being here. And can you talk about how you got into this and what is the connection between food and sustainability? Absolutely, I'd love to. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. I grew up on a farm in Africa, so uh, not quite Meryl Streep. I had a farm in Africa, but <laughs> it was pretty close, very, very close to nature, um, both animals and crops, and a tremendous respect for nature. And as I grew up and as I studied, two of my favorite words have become holistic perspective. And that's how health and sustainability to me come together because it's that holistic perspective, understanding where your food comes from, how it is grown, and then the effect on your body. And then of course the bigger picture, how the food for all of us comes about. And there's the rub, as Hamlet would say <laughs> if he was here because using traditional agricultural methods. And when I was growing up, we were just using mm -hmm. traditional methods. Things like aquaponics, hydroponics, vertical farming did not exist. And we just don't have enough land to be able to feed the population we're going to be. To give you an idea how much extra land we'd need, a land mass almost the size of Canada using traditional farming, which is what makes hydroponics and vertical farming so wonderful because it also extends the place that you can grow superfoods. And one of the things I would really like to tell your viewers about today are three superfoods, and I've brought some with me here, sea weeds, sea moss, and sea lettuce, and about why these are protein-rich and really, really good good for the planet. So in a nutshell, holistic perspective, think about water as well as the soil. Ah, sounds interesting. So these obviously must all be from the sea. They so are, yeah. they are. Do you want to taste this? This is the personal favorite. This yeah. is, please do, it's a red seaweed. This one is small. Yeah, now what is so special <laughs> about red seaweed. Cut a piece because I need to be able to talk. <laughs> yes, is it's very, very protein rich. Mm. Rich in fiber as well. Um, I joke to say that, you know, when it comes to the three superfoods from the sea, from the cure for the common wrinkle, which would be sea moss. I read that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, to the cure for the common cold, or rather making it very much shorter in duration, which is red seaweed, these have got you covered. So red seaweed, very, very rich in protein. Do you like sushi? Not really. Okay, well for sushi <laughs> lovers, um, you may know that there's a seaweed, the red seaweed around the sushi, mm -hmm. that is, I'm not going to munch because um, <laughs> it's mm. probably not going to be environmentally <laughs> friendly. I know it'll get stuck on a tooth, but um, <laughs> if I did munch, um, this contains so many vitamins, minerals, protein, 50 grams um, of protein, you know, really uh, more than any of the other seaweeds, a very rich source in protein. Some experiments done reduce the duration of colds. Now, what's the magic ingredient mm. in red seaweed? In a word, carrageenan. And you may be looking at this, and I could snack, <laughs> but for the sake of our viewers, not seeing red seaweed on my teeth, I'm not going to. Where can you get this? You can get it in so many foods. Sushi, I know Gloria's not a fan. How right, about... But I like that because I, I love salt and that ah. has a salty taste to it. I love it. <laughs> exactly, yes. And how about uh, fermented, do you like yogurts or yes. fermented beverages? And uh, so you can get carrageenan in that as well. It's used as a stabilizing agent. And... Um, it also does you good at the same time. That's rather nice. And Absolutely. 
many beverages, yogurts, um, think of your favorite yogurts. They don't have to be made with dairy. There are other uh, dairy type fermented products on the market. Check your ingredient list and if you've got carrageenan in it, Ooh. you're going to be getting the really good stuff Ooh. from red seaweed. And I'm going to leave this with you afterwards so that you can snack and have Ooh. some more salty snacks. Right, and maybe share it with some of our staff members. <laughs> Absolutely, you're most welcome. This is also seaweed. It's another form. This is a salty snack as Ooh. well. Uh, this one is sea moss. And you can, uh, the back of the pack that I got this one in had all sorts of interesting recipes that you can use. This is sea lettuce. All of them you can crumble, you can use on salads, mm. you can use in soups, you can use in sauces. Basically as an ingredient to pep up, instead of adding, you mentioned this is salty for example, mm. instead of adding salt mm. to a recipe, crumble up and add some red sea lettuce or sorry red seaweed or green seaweed or even uh, sea moss mm. so add it as an ingredient to hide it if your family are picky eaters into the other stuff that you're making ah. yes so many I'm many sneaky. ways yes <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not a mom but many of my friends are moms and one does have to be sneaky unless of course your kids are the kind of kids who come home and tell you what is the healthy stuff that you should be eating in which case they've already said mom you need to hit the seaweed the sea moss and the sea lettuce in which case you say yes absolutely I will yeah, I don't have children either but I yeah. uh, know people who do who have their children come and say tell them and it's so wonderful, you know, they are such a source of inspiration and education. I used to be a biology teacher to go back I to... I saw that you were a teacher. Yes, yes, yes. and I wish <laughs> in my day I could have, as part of biology, have taught hydroponics mm. or vertical farming. For your viewers, everything that you see on this table here is possible to grow in one of these. Now I just picked that up on the internet. You can make your own. Ah. You don't have to buy it. Mm -hmm. You can get, go onto YouTube and search for hydroponics. Mm -hmm. And basically in winter in Boston or in Chicago, <laughs> where I'm from, uh. if you've got a bucket, some hoses, some clips left from summer and uh, some things to hold liquid basically you do need growing lamps you can make your own you can make it if you've got an enclosed porch which is heated because it's so cold right yes. now if you have a basement you can do it there or you can do it in the kitchen mm. and you know there are so many food scarce nowadays that's actually how I got into hydroponics ah, really because uh, I have osteoporosis, so I try and eat a lot of leafy greens. Um, so this is a particularly good source of the vitamins and minerals that I'm after. Also a great consumer of kale. Suddenly I couldn't get romaine lettuce and I couldn't get kale mm. because of the food scare. And I thought, I'm just tired. I'm going to start growing my own so you can grow kale, cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, strawberries, peppers, basil which is divine. Basil was made for hydroponic gardening. I started off simple with herbs as I mentioned to you and my basil really looks like the photographs in the ads and then romaine lettuce, mint as well and thyme. All the, if you like herbs and you like comfort food in winter, mac and cheese. Yes. You never get yes. too old to enjoy <laughs> mac and cheese. And you can turn it into a, you know, from mac and cheese, I get store bought. I get takeaway because sometimes I'm very, very busy. Mm -hmm. I chop my basil, I chop my thyme, 
And you know, you can get uh, sweet basil and Thai basil, mix the two together, chop them. If you've got um, pino, what are pino? Pine nuts. Ah. You can grind them up in a pestle and mortar with olive oil and make your own pesto. Or you can get lazy like me. I just chop it with the scissors, ah. <laughs> stir it up within my mac and cheese. It is, mm -hmm. it smells so good. You know, I always think that nature color-coded the good stuff. That's why red sea lettuce, seaweed, sorry, that's why red seaweed, the, uh, the ruby in the crown of the ocean superfoods is so good for you. They come color-coded. You want to know the really, really good stuff? Mm -hmm. The darker the reds and the purples, the better for you. The greens are also good. But the really special stuff, if you do your research, you'll find it's in the reds and it's in the purples. I mean, look at this. Mm. Does this get to be more perfectly color-coded <laughs> by Mother Nature? You can just see it. it's going to do you good. And it actually does. Mm. Um, reduces cholesterol, reduces inflammation. That's great. Wonder food. Wonderful what you yes. can get from nature. Yes. It's amazing. Uh, I was reading some of these things that what they can help you correct, basically. <laughs> like for instance, um, I have psoriasis, so I would be very interested in the inflammation stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff because it's caused by inflammation, obviously. So, uh, yeah, so w w what other kinds of things are each of these targeting? If you will. Well, um, inflammation is obviously one of them. Inflammation, I have, uh, depending which body part you look at, osteopenia yeah. or osteoporosis, inflammation mm -hmm. has a role in that. Mm -hmm. The common wrinkle as well that we talked about. Yeah, so it's very interesting to people my age. I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, the free radical theory of aging says that if you can have antioxidant rich foods and all of these are antioxidant rich as well you can address the causes of disease that are linked to free radicals so all of us i'm sure are readers vor <laughs> voracious readers of webmd and it comes down to certain shrubbery whether it's grown on land or as you can grow all of these on water or these are grown in the sea are good for you combined of course with always enough sleep and cannot stress as well exercise the importance of a good diet holistic yeah. i don't know why i did that with my fingers except it seemed to indicate <laughs> yeah, holistic oh, yeah. <laughs> um, to combine those uh, absolutely it's, you know, we're still going to get aches and pains and we're still going to get issues, but uh, it lowers, uh, it gives us a better chance to be able to live as naturally as so many of us want to live mm -hmm. nowadays. So true, so true. <laughs> what are your favorite uh, tips and hints for living healthily? Um, I go along with getting enough sleep, which I don't always do. <laughs> Um, and, and also um, being interested in things, you know. Uh, I think people who just sit uh, are not interested in learning new things. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to age faster. You're not going to feel as vibrant, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, and obviously a good diet that will help you to be active. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, you said something very interesting about learning new stuff. We've talked about the planet, but mentioning people makes me think about uh, red seaweed again, particularly carrageen, and the places where it's farmed. For those of us who want to keep local farmers in business, mm -hmm. not just here, but around the world, 75,000 local farmers make their living growing seaweed. Is that not amazing? That is. And you know, an even better thing is that when they get into seaweed farming, they increase the biodiversity of the ocean. So that's good for the planet. 
it's good for us when we eat it, but it gives them a source of income. Now, these local farmers come from some very distra and I had no idea till I started to get into this, mm -hmm. they come from some very destructive other ways of trying to make a living, including dynamiting fish, for example. So you replace all these destructive mm. ways of being able to just, these farmers just want to put food on the table like all farmers do around the world. And now they've got a way of doing it that is good for people and it's good for the planet and the biodiversity of the ocean. And you know, when you come into a story like this, you, you always seem to have a circular discussion. And that's the whole point of things being holistic because <laughs> they feed off each other. And uh, one good healthy practice, you know, turns into another. It really is a thing of beauty. <laughs> it is. How did you go about setting this all up? Um, how could people hear, like I am in a condo, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have an enclosed porch, don't have a basement. <laughs> don't have. Do you have so a... you mentioned in the kitchen. Yes. So. so I would go with something that you can put you know, it depends if you want to MacGyver it <laughs> or if you have friends that want to MacGyver ah. it for you. Uh -huh. Do the YouTube challenge and repurpose, which is a wonderful thing to do along with recycling, is repurpose stuff you can find in your kitchen and make your own. Ah. Or if you want to <clears throat> spoil yourself a little, you can do a search like I did on the internet and there are lots of offers for commercial little things mm. or bigger things that you can buy. Mm. I would give you a hint whether you're doing it yourself or whether you're buying something, don't economize on the wattage of your growing lamps, your LEDs, your light emitting di diodes, which are the ones that are going to create the um, the sunlight, the artificial indoor sunlight for your shrubbery to grow. Mm. I did not think this through. She has a PhD. <laughs> she did not think this through. Duh. I went for 20 watt lights. Hindsight, I should have gone for 40. So go for really as much as you can afford. I would suggest starting small. Mm -hmm. Start with herbs that are easy to grow. Mm. Basil is really easy to grow. Um, everything on this table can be grown, but the easy stuff to grow is basil, is mint, this is um, spinach back here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what else is easier to grow? Celery is, uh, sorry, not celery, parsley is easy oh, to grow. Mm -hmm. Dill is delicate. Dill okay. got, is on my D list right now. It wouldn't sprout. It's very easy to set up. You need water. It comes with growing medium. You feed it twice a week, two caps full. You have the growing lights. This one has Wi-Fi. Don't spend the money on going with <laughs> Wi-Fi. I did not get that to work either along with a dill. You know, this is an experiment as is most things in life. Um, that sounds almost too digital. <laughs> yes, yes, you know, so don't worry about the Wi-Fi. You really don't need it. It'll tell you every two weeks you um, give it some nutrients. Another tip, don't wait for it to tell you. It needs water. When it starts to grow, it really needs a lot of water. The one thing that the makers of these little things don't joke about is when they say hydroponics grows things faster. I've seen numbers saying five times as fast. They're not kidding. I have had basil grow from that big to that big overnight. I mean, right mm. now I'm doing Jack and the Beanstalk <laughs> basil at home. Personally, I think that I prefer the taste of the little ones. Mm. You know, um, the scientist part in me says, let it grow, Gail, let it grow, see how big it can get. <laughs> the one who just loves the smell and the taste on the mac and cheese says, cut oh. me now, eat me. You know, it does the Alice in Wonderland thing, eat me, eat me. <laughs> 
So um, find your happy medium. Mm. You know, it's not that the bigger ones, they've, they've got different taste profiles according to size of leaf. Really? Is my uh, short term kind of uh, experimental findings so far, you know. Um, I am recording it on Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to follow the size of Gail's basil <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the recipes that I do are terribly, terribly simple because I basically can't cook. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm a food scientist, so I always think I'm, I, I process more than I cook, you know. <laughs> and I'm used to doing it on an industrial scale and sometimes I scale down and it works. Actually, it usually works. Mm and otherwise my friends lie through their teeth and tell me it's edible when it's not. But you know, experiment, find what works for you. You can, as well as growing herbs, you can grow flowers. Uh -huh. And one of the flowers, which is also a herb that you can grow is lavender. And more than any other scent in the world, I love the smell of lavender. So um, this, I have another unit at home, which is growing my shrubbery at the moment. This one, when it goes back, when I'm not on adventures in Boston. Uh -huh. <laughs> lavender, do you like lavender? I do, yes. So you can grow it in your kitchen. And I imagine the aroma, mm. and you know, when you disturb it, mm. that must be lovely. We, we need to stay in touch. And if you grow lavender, let me know how it goes. All right, all right. Um, I do have a cat. How, how do cats do with the, these kinds of things growing in the kitchen? Do you have any idea? <laughs> Does your kitty walk on the counter? She hasn't, but I had one before that no matter how many times I told her to get down, mm -hmm. th they say that um, you just have to say no one more time than they say yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not for that cat anyway. Yes, but, I... uh, so far she's been good. She did get on the counter once and I shoot her off and said no and, and uh, this one doesn't hmm. so far it doesn't I wonder how she'd do with catnip you can buy she the, loves catnip. the little <laughs> pods that go with us and you can put your own seeds in yeah. so you could try ah. catnip of course then you'll never get her off the counter <laughs> afterwards you know well, I would try to grow it I have a, a slider of yeah. sunshine coming in, and, and that's actually where her little catnip pad is. Oh, so. <laughs> oh she has a pad. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, you know, the, the one thing, if you were growing herbs that you didn't want to wash, that, that's the whole point of growing them yourself, you know. You don't have to wash them. You can just right. cut and eat. Um, if Kitty had been sniffing, <laughs> you might not want that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's the hygiene right. aspect. That's why I asked, does she tippy-toe on the counter <laughs> or not? But, you know, um, it sounds like it'll be a delightful experiment anyway. It would. Yes, it would. And so. you can, in addition to the lavender, if you like, you can grow flowers as well. Just mm. colour in winter. Oh. It does you good to see green stuff. It does. And colour in winter. Mm. <laughs> right. Yes, it makes you feel really good. But my father, uh, actually my grandfather, um, peddled his vegetables and so forth with a horse and wagon <laughs> in the next town over. Well, actually his, his, uh, the, his area was in Lowell and, uh, and my father always, always had a garden mm -hmm. outside. So like, like you, you were on a farm that wasn't quite a farm. He did this on the side besides working in the mills. But um, yeah, there was nothing like the taste of getting something right from the oh, garden. Yes. So like, yeah. And you know, it's so rewarding. I found, I started to do this before Christmas. One, it, they get 17 hours of light a day, so it's a beautiful, bright spot in the darkest bit of my kitchen. One, it was bright. And two, I was visiting at three or four, no, no, okay, I'll be honest, more times a day <laughs> to watch it grow. <laughs> it made winter, the darkest days, you know, towards the mm. 21st of December before we mm -hmm. turn the corner, it really made it shorter. I don't know if I get sad as in seasonal affective disorder uh -huh. in winter, but having the light there and checking on it every day definitely, you know, right now I'm into 43 days growing and I can't believe it. You know, how did it pass that quickly? So there's that, and once again, if you've got kids, 
you know, of whatever age, to be able to do this as a project together. Mm -hmm. Really so rewarding, mm -hmm. you know, or just things you can do with your family so rewarding. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, people, we didn't cover everything, obviously, in the short time that we have, but uh, if they want more information, Mm -hmm. oh, where should they go? Well, my adventures in hydroponics on Twitter at, at Z A G R R L, Zagirl, and uh, on Instagram, the same. You can see photographs all the way along as well. And um, I'm writing some articles. Uh, where I talk about the benefits of the ocean superfoods as well. You know, we didn't have a chance to get into specific benefits um, for these, but you'll be able to see on Twitter the different articles that I write. And, uh, you know, just remember seaweed, sea moss, sea lettuce. Right, right. Whichever so. internet search <laughs> program, you right. know, DuckDuckGo is a new favorite of mine and you know check yeah. them out it's worth it right and dr gail barnes they can search for that it's g-a-i-l g-a-i-l b-a-r-n-e-s that is so, correct all right all right so any last words for our viewers that uh words of encouragement or or the real link between sustainability and food and yes um it's all about <laughs> taking holistic perspective and it's the end of the interview so I'm going to be able to snack now and um, learn about what's out there you know there is so much new to be learned from the traditional way of farming to the non-traditional to the ocean base to the water to you know carrageenan for example <laughs> you can find it in all your favorite foods and uh, so you may say, well, you know, my budget doesn't stretch to be able to buy this. I'd like to, I'd love to, but you know, where can I get it in other stuff? And it's in so many uh, things that we're buying every day that we didn't know about, but now we do. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. This has been very enlightening. Thank you. It's uh, very tasty. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Can't wait to try the others. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning in to Thinking Out Loud, and I will see you next time.